Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to another episode of FTL back on board the VSS Archon, part of Keeve's Incursor Cruiser mod. So, this is a pretty fantastic ship, in case you haven't seen it already. It looks gorgeous and plays very interestingly. We have four very powerful weapons on board, three of which require missiles, so if you're not very careful, you'll run out of missiles really fast. Luckily enough, though, the Arc Beam, one of our remaining weapons that does not use missiles, is incredibly powerful at wiping out the crew of enemy ships and disabling them very effectively. We're going to need to make sure we try and use that in combination with our other weapons to turn the enemies against themselves. Hopefully this will work out great, although we'll have to wait and see how it goes. We have 112 scrap in our inventory. What do we got looking here? Not a whole lot so far. What I think we're going to do with this money to start off here, we have pretty decent engines and shields. We have a whole pile of Zoltan giving us free energy as well, making just, which makes things much easier for us. We're to buy ourselves a level of weapons control, though, so we don't have to necessarily use bolad rockets in combination with our arc beam, because I have a feeling that when we're going to start meeting higher shielded enemies here, we're going to want the potential to hit through them if we can, whereas the bolad rocket only does one ion damage if we hit it against a room that only has, or has, rather has more than one layer of shields. Not the best. So, we're going to put our power bars into one extra one so that we can actually use an extra weapon and we'll hold on to the rest of our money in case we can find ourselves a teleporter later on to make use of our rock boarding party on a flaming wet ship with an arc beam sounds like a good way to do it to me we're going to power up our aurora mass cannon and our arc beam together this time and see what we find if we need to swap back to the bull line we always can let us jump onwards. We have two options. We can go up or to the right. I think we'll go up so we can work our way over this way, which gives us a lot more options, whereas this is a little bit more confined. I'm not sure if we can make all those jumps, so I think you could probably make that one. Let's head up this way regardless and see what we can see. We have a huge crew here, so this should be fairly effective. Here we come across a Rebel Automated Scout ship pursuing a civilian with weapons engaged. Well, that's unfortunate because Rebel Automated Scouts are literally the worst thing we can have to fight. Let's fight them anyway. Let's aid the civilian ship. We power up weapons and engage. They do have two layers of shields, so that was convenient. They also have a Burst Laser Mark III and a Lido Missile, which is not great. We're going to fire the Aurora Mass Cannon at them momentarily in the shields. Hopefully that'll put a hole in the ship, which means they can't repair them. And then we'll be able to arc beam them into next week to turn off their weapons, but unfortunately we won't be able to kill them with the arc beam because it doesn't actually do any system damage. It didn't put a hole in the ship either, which is not great. We will, however, take away their ability to dodge and take away their ability to use most of their weapons. This won't necessarily destroy them yet, though, so we're going to go for the Sun Fury Rotary Auto Cannon here, our four-shot minigun, to actually go for the kill because uh, beyond that, our weapons don't actually do any damage. And this does the most for the least number of rockets. So this costs us three rockets to kill the ship, which is not too bad. One more SRAC, Sun Fury Rotary Auto Cannon Salvo, should take them out for good. There we go. Three missiles down, but didn't take any damage. That's pretty good. Ship breaks apart and we hasten to contact the civilians, gathering two fuel, a missile, and 14 scrap in the process. We contact the civilians, we find out that they were a science vessel. They thank us for saving them and offer us a reward of three fuel, a drone part, and 27 scrap. Some nice rewards, but some missiles would have been nice too, because we have a ton of fuel already. Alright, well, thanks anyway there, guys. We'll take what we can get. So, what are we going to take next? At the moment, we don't need to upgrade our weapons any further, because we have everything we need, and there's no reason to activate more than one of these missile weapons at a time, because we really don't want to be wasting anything. So, we're going to try and find some other way to put our money to use. I think for now, though, we'll just hold on to the money. So, we'll turn on the Aurora Mass Cannon again, instead of the uh, Sun Fury, because we don't need it right now. We'll jump over this way, maybe work our way around there, I think. That might be fun. Hit the Nebula Beacon, go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, work our way around there. That looks good to me. Let's see what we can find over at this beacon. Hopefully something good. Or nothing. <laughs> now, apparently not nothing. We arrive at a populated sector. One merchant seems to be mass broadcasting a request for a mercenary ship to aid him, and we agree to respond. He tells us our ship seems reasonably well equipped. Simply, the problem for him is that a freighter carrying his goods is now a week late. They flew through a pirate-filled sector in their haste, and he fears that the cargo may be lost. He wants us to go investigate. This is a bad mission. It gives you a very bad reward. But we're going to go rescue them anyway because when you rescue the crew, all you get from them is the reward for killing the ship you just killed. There's no double reward for killing a ship and rescuing the crew, which is kind of silly. We arrive in the system to see a pirate crew pursuing a civilian ship. We detect messages from the civilians on a distress, distress frequency. Well, let's get in there and help them. Aid those civilians. We power up weapons and engage the pirate ship. Aha! A slug interceptor. Unfortunately for them, we're perfectly equipped to destroy slug interceptors. So we're going to charge up our weaponry, smack them in the face with it a little bit, and then burn them to death. The odds of them being able to recover after this are incredibly, incredibly slim to none. So, the Aurora Mass Cannon, fire! Please hit. There we go. Good shot. And then we're going to arc beam you right through there. That looks pretty good to me. Do lots of damage. Fantastic. 
Now, the odds of them being able to actually recover from this are fairly low. They might be able to put the fires out in the shield room. They can't heal because there's no med bay on this ship. But even if they manage to fix everything over here forever, there's no oxygen coming back into that ship. So once we burn it all out, there's nothing they can do about it. Of course, that does also mean that it's going to be hard for us to intercept them trying to fix the, the damage we caused. But their NG is now dead as well, meaning their repairs are slowed down. And the Rockman has decided to walk out of the suffocation, meaning he is now effectively useless. They won't be able to do a darn thing, and our Archimedes is probably going to kill him. And go. Yep, there he goes. Dead Rockman. There are no more life signs detected on the pirate ship, so we gather a few of the drone part and 39 scrap from their wreckage, and we contact the civilians. They respond, saying it's a good thing that they came when we did. They'd be dead now otherwise. They say that they're a ship, right, and they'd like to help us like we helped them, offering to install 19 scrap and a pike beam on our ship. That's two pike beams. That's a lot of laser beams. We don't need that many pike beams. Whatever. We'll take them anyway. Thank you for the offer. Let's keep moving. We have a distress beacon over here, so let's go check that out. Then we'll hit up that store and see if we can get a teleporter or anything else interesting over there. We follow the distress beacon to a small asteroid belt, where we find a small ship struggling to maneuver through the field. They message us, saying that their shields are down and they don't know how much longer they can last, so we agree to try and help them, despite the risks. We try and shield their ship with ours and escort them out of the field, but despite our best efforts, a stray rock hits a key structure in their ship and it shatters in front of our eyes. We salvage what we can before leaving, getting only 16 scrap from the wreckage, and try our best to not think about the lost crew. Well, 167 scraps looking pretty good. Let's jump in here and see if there's anything nasty going on there. I'm sure there's ion storms and all manner of nasties. No, we look pretty good so far. And it's just one shield bar mantis. Not bad. A mantis ship hails us through the storm, saying, These are sacred <laughs> clan hunting grounds. You are prey. Shields are up. All right. These guys shouldn't be too hard to take down. They do have Hermes missiles and a burst laser mark too, but once we get that shield down, it's probably never going back up again. Unfortunately, we can't see what's going on in there, which makes it a bit more difficult for us, and we can't immediately hit the weapons and the shields in the same salvo with the arc beam, which does make things a little bit more difficult. But thankfully for us, we did immediately put out all of the shield in one go, since this does do three damage, and the maximum shield that could have to only have one bar is three. So that's nice. It will take them a little bit harder to recover from that. They probably have an NG on board there who's going to be fixing that, so as soon as we get the opportunity, we need to fire a second arc beam through there. There we go. Now it's on fire, even though we can't see it. Also, it's been put back damaged, and whoever was in there trying to repair it just got hurt. Meaning it's unlikely they're now going to be able to fix that thing. Yeah, now they're having to run away. There goes the fire in the weapons room. We're going to burn out these other rooms as well, so there's literally nowhere for them to go that is safe, and they're all dead. With the crew dead, we take six of their fuel out of storage and gather 34 scrap as well. Not bad. We have a ton of fuel. We're probably never going to need any more again. Let's check out this store and see if we can't get anything good here, and then we'll work our way forward a little bit further. There's only one other ship at this beacon, showing heavy damage. As we receive a me message on our console from them, we're we discover that they are crippled by a band of pirates and are now trying to sell off their supplies in order to get the, uh, rather, I don't know, I'll show how this works. They're selling their valuable equipment to acquire the necessary supplies to get home, but all we're giving them is scrap metal. I imagine they must be fixing some kind of serious hull breaches then. We could try and get a drone recovery arm for later, but I have a feeling that's not going to be the most useful for us. On the other hand, we could buy our tele teleporter or a cloak. Cloak is incredibly useful. I'd love to get the teleporter to supplement our uh, weaponry, but at the moment I want a cloak, so we'll take that. And if we can sell a pike beam, yes we can, we'll sell that and we'll grab a crew teleporter with it. Because there's no way we're going to need that many beam weapons, especially not that many pike beams. Alright, so there we go. We have ourselves two major systems. We could get one of these. The drone recovery arm is great, but I have a feeling we're probably not going to be using a lot of drones, especially not in the early stage of the game. And expensive to try and get anyway. I will be right back. One second. Right, so let's keep moving here. What do we got going on? We've got a whole bunch of options here. Wow. Distress Beacon, Distress Beacon Quest. Excellent. That sounds interesting. Probably at least one of these Distress Beacons is going to wind up doing nothing for us, but we might as well go take a look anyway and see what we got. In the meantime, though, we have no scrap left to upgrade our systems, and we don't really have the, the, the power bars to actually run them all, but for the time being, that'll do. So, let's jump over and check out this Distress Beacon and see if we can help them out at all, and then we'll move on. What do we got going on over here? As soon as we arrive at the Distress Signal, shots are fired towards us. It was a trap after all. They have double burst laser Mark IIs. That could be quite dangerous, actually. We're going to hopefully uh, Aurora Mass cannon them in the shields, and we should be able to set fire to all kinds of lovely things. They do have a rock man, though, so we'll have to be careful about what we actually do here. Although, we should just cloak them. We have a cloak now. Shouldn't be too hard to dodge them. Shouldn't be too hard to dodge them. There we go. Nice try there. Ooh, that's a cool cloak image. Look at that! The yellow power lines are still visible. I like it. Well, let's Aurora Mass cannon these suckers in the shields. Please hit. And we missed. 
Fantabulous. Charge that up again and try again. I should really be using the uh, the SRAC here, probably, because it has a better chance of not missing a single shot and then leaving us stranded. But I'll use the Aurora Mass Cannon one more time. Please hit. There we go, that's what we're talking about. And we will fry them right through the weapons. Yeah, yeah, go, 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 go. Excellent. They missed us a bunch of hot, a bunch of shots, too, which means the chance of them actually doing any damage to us is getting very low. There's a hole in the shield, which is great. All manner of good things are going on for us here. We need to make sure they do not get those weapons fixed. So we're going to set them on fire again. There we go. Burning through the people is also very good because it means they're going to last a shorter amount of time. It also helps for the fact that uh, even though the Rockman's in there, we can still burn him every time. And that makes things work out quite well for us. They still have their helm intact, but they just lost their humans. The odds of them getting out of here are getting fairly low. And their oxygen is burning, so the odds of them actually being able to recover from this in any way at this point are pretty much nil. Which is good for us. Always nice to see your enemies going down in flames. He is going to start suffocating and going to run away in a minute, which is fine. We can now burn him again. Hello, friend. I hope you like burning. It's going to take us at least one more shot to kill him, though, because I don't think that room's going to run out of oxygen too quickly because of the fact that it wasn't burning at all yet. So one more salvo from the arc beam should do it. Goodbye, Rockman. Bzzz. This beam is ridiculous. Oh, that's fantastic. There are no more life signs remaining on the ship, so we stripped up useful material, getting three fuel drone part 39 scrap and a scrap recovery arm. That means we're going to get more goodies at all times, and that's fantabulous. Only problem now is we're running fairly low on missiles, and if we don't find a weapon that'll let us not use missiles to get rid of the enemy shields, we're going to be really hard-pressed to continue here. But let's go check out this distress beacon and see what they want, and then we'll work our way forwards towards the exit. What's going on over here? We find the source of the distress call, a small research station where it appears a small laboratory fire has gotten out of control and is threatening to destroy the entire station. Their fire suppression system is no longer responding. What are we going to do? Are we going to send our crew in to help? Are we going to try and rescue the survivors as much best as we can? Or are we going to send our rock crew member in? That's the obvious choice. Let's send him in there. Our rock soldier tears through the airlock directly into the fire. We've never seen someone that large move that fast. He disperses as much fire suppressant as possible into the heart of the blaze and eventually the fires start to die down. As we contact the survivors, they thank us. With most of the fire under control, the scientists are able to help secure the station, and they thank us sincerely for our help with a generous reward of 39 scrap and an automated reloader, which turns into 42 scrap because we just got a scrap recovery arm. That's actually a really nice weapon, too. The automated reloader is a great augment. So we have a pretty good complement of augments all of a sudden. That's pretty amazing. Pretty darn amazing. So we have a whole bunch of extra money, too. We should spend that on some power bars and some extra cloak to make sure we can get the edge over our foes. And let's keep a-jumping. Check out this quest beacon here. Get our goodies from helping out these people. And that'll be that. We arrive at the last known location of the merchant's delivery. As we begin to scan for the lost ship, we find a ship being chased by a pirate. This must be the missing delivery crew. We move in to rescue them. They do have a teleporter, so they might be boarding us if we can't help it. They have breach missiles and a burst laser mark too. Hello, no thank you. Thankfully, we can use our Aurora mass cannon here to hopefully penetrate those shields and knock at least both layers out. At least one layer out. Two would be ideal, though. I do have NG on there and a bunch of humans, so it'd be difficult for us to kill them if we don't immediately knock it out. I'm going to let these shots go, and we're going to try and dodge the breach missile, because that thing is the worst if it actually hits us. It'll knock our shields pretty much all the way out, even if these don't all hit. So, we're going to roar our mass cannon in the shields. Go, go, go! And we missed. Ugh. Ugh. Let's try that again. Hit them in the shields this time, please. I don't have enough missiles to be wasting on this. Here comes the shot. And we're going to have to dodge. Oh my goodness, it didn't even take them out. That's the worst. All right, then. Well, this is not going so well for us. We need to hit them again. They only have one shield bar, though, so we're going to try the Sun Fury Rotary Auto Cannon here, see if we can pummel them in the shield. We only have to hit two of the shots, probably, to actually do enough to make it worthwhile, and then we can arc beam them and hopefully prevent them from actually ever repairing that thing. If we set it mostly on fire, that should do it. Like this, five rooms of fire should be pretty good. The Rockman is now injured. Oh, they have a med bay over there. That's not good. We only have three missiles left, so I can't afford to waste any. And I will set fire through here in a second, and that should stop them from overhealing. They will probably get the shields back up, though, if we're not careful. Hopefully that fire will spread back in. Looking pretty good here so far, but we could be in a bad way if this doesn't work out in our favor here. They are getting the shields back up. If that thing goes back up, we're in trouble. And these shields are back online. Ugh. Okay, cloak. We can't hit them fast enough to stop it. That's unfortunate. All right. Blast them with the SRAC. Thank you. There we go. Now we need to prevent them from fixing the med bay and the shield simultaneously. This is not ideal. We are going to have to burn the med bay, though, because otherwise things are going to be nasty for us. We shouldn't need to fire anything else, though. These guys should wind up dead now, no matter what happens. 
Their weapons are burned out, so they ought to actually be able to fix them are fairly low, but on the other hand, the oxygen hasn't been destroyed yet either. This is not a great situation for us. Hopefully the fire spreads enough that it doesn't put itself out. Actually, the oxygen room being on should prevent it from going out for a long time, so this might work. Even if we don't actually burn them to death, when the systems nearby get burned up, they will die. So that'll work out in our favor too. There we go. Renji's trying to run back to try and fix the med bay, but I doubt that's going to work. Nope, nice try there. Now, the one problem here is going to be this rock man right here. I think he's what's going to cause it to, to be a... Oh wow, the fire is not spreading into the shield room again. Funny that. Yeah, if any of these systems burns out before we actually manage to kill them, it's not going to work in our favor. So we're probably going to have to watch this ship explode. This guy's going to die, and that'll work out in our favor. And then the rock man might try and run over there to try and fix it. I'm not sure how that'll work. Hmm. Maybe they won't actually burn... Oh, this is not good. <laughs> they, they've given up. Okay, well, we could burn them to get the extra awards with the arc beam, but it's not going to happen. Oh, there he goes. Unfortunately, this rockman is not going to burn, and we can't arc beam him to death through here, so he's going to get the ship destroyed, meaning we do not get our lovely reward. But that's okay. Yep, yeah, there it goes. It burnt up as we attacked it, I think. We contact the delivery ship, who are grateful for our assistance. They offer us our award for saving them, which includes a fuel, two missiles, and 33 scrap. And that's it. Nothing from the ship. Disappoint. Oh well. It's one event. You can't win them all, I guess. We do need more missiles quite badly, though. Quite badly. I should send my rockman over to the teleporter. It's right beside the med bay, too, which is nice. Right over the teleporter there, because that's going to be their general position. We'll send our mantis over to this side, so they can get around quickly, since we already have a rockman there, in case we take on borders. 43 scrap is pretty good. We have one, two... I guess we have a full three jumps here before we run out of space. We might as well explore right around that corner. And we've jumped into an asteroid belt. Not ideal. A pirate ship is lying in wait inside this asteroid field, and it immediately moves in to attack us. Well, they could be boarding us. I don't really care if they do, because we have an amazing anti-boarding party, like I just mentioned. But on the plus side, since they're going to have all these problems here, we can just arc beam them in the weapons and whatnot once their shields go down, and we should have no problems taking out the crew here without destroying all the ship. We just need to wait till an asteroid hits it, like so. Now we can burn out the medbay weapons and oxygen. How about that? There we go, that'll do. It'll take them a little while to put out some of those fires anyway. They do have a rock man, which is going to make it a little bit more difficult for us, but that's okay. I really like the look of that cloak image, so that's pretty cool. It's just an, out it's just an outline of yellow lines, but it looks really good. So there we go, now we can hit them again. There we go, do some more damage to more people, set more fires. Thankfully, they have a mantis in here trying to do the repairs. That's not going to work so well for them. They are, I guess, trying to get their uh, teleporter working again, because as soon as they fix it, they'll be able to jump into our ship. But I'm not sure if they will. Oh, yes, they did. Okay, what do you know? All right, mantises, go murder those guys. I could just take out the oxygen here, but I think I'll murder them the old-fashioned way. And next time they get hit with a asteroid, I'm killing their pirate. <laughs> pirate? Their pilot. All right. This rock man should go down fairly soon, fairly soon, and they have literally nothing else they can do to us. We can just relax here until they eventually die. And turn on the med bay. There we go, get our mantises healed back up, and next asteroid that hits them, we're going to murder their last friend. I hope it hits soon. Come on, asteroids. Come on. No, don't hit us. Hit them, please. There we go. Die. Perfect. Dead Mantis. With their crew dead, we take their fuel out of storage and take 35 scrap. I don't need more fuel. I've got 33 fuel. That's insane. What I need is missiles. I've only got four of those, and I really badly need them. All right, whatever. 81 scrap is also not bad. There's a store right over here. We might be able to pick something up here. An ion bomb or something. An ion bomb isn't really great. Some kind of ion weapon that doesn't use missiles. A transmission from the nearby planet indicates an outpost below which offers supplies to travelers. We send down an away party to check it out, and what do we find? Ah, uh, drones. I don't need drones right now. I do need missiles, though, so I'll probably wind up buying some of those. I might sell the pike beam, too. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. We have some pretty good stuff, though, so it's hard to complain about the rest of our gear. I will buy the missiles, though, because we need them, and if we don't have missiles, we're going to be dead in the water here, so some missiles would be wise. Do we want to swap the pike beam into our arsenal so that we can actually make use of it? These are really valuable weapons if we decide to actually try and sell them because uh, they have like 60 on these ones, 40 and 20. It's pretty valuable. The pike beam is 30, so we could swap it for the Bola DMP rocket because I have a feeling we're not going to use this much anymore now that the enemy ships have more than one layer of shield. And um, that way we can get the opportunity to use pike or beam weapon blue events. And if we ever do get the opportunity to fry them with a pike beam, we can try it. Uh, I think we'll try that. The bull-eyed rocket, you've served us well, but we're retiring you from our arsenal. Goodbye. There we go. 
<sighs> what are we going to get next? We're probably going to hold on to the rest of our money because it's not good for much here. Getting a drone control could be nice, but we don't have the money for it anymore, and it's just not its not productive for us at this point. So we're not going to worry about it. We will, however, probably put an extra point into our cloak, just because having that long cloak time is always fun, but not now. We'll do that later. Jump over to the exit and see if we can't get anything good on the way out of here. I'd be surprised if we get anything fantastic, but let's take a look and see. We arrive at the Long Range Beacon. When the FDL drive is charged, we'll be able to jump to the next sector, and what do we find? A uh, repair station. We see a small station fitted with hundreds of repair drones, where we receive an automated message saying that they don't know who we are and they don't care, but that if we go there, we can get some hull repair. Well, that sounds all good to me, but let's take ourselves the cheapest possible option, I guess. I did leave this space here in case we found something like this. This is no cheaper than the station, though, so it's not really a great deal, but we'll take it anyway. We'll take five repairs for ten scraps so we didn't completely waste the jump, and let's jump out of here. We could go check out this jump and then head back to the exit, but I don't think we want to take that risk right now. Our options now are a slug-controlled nebula or a pirate-controlled sector, but the obvious choice is the pirate-controlled sector because it gives us two options at the next jump instead of only one. We'll probably wind up going the top path anyway because it has the most red beacons, which means we'll have the most enemies to fight, but we'll have to give, that op give ourselves that opportunity to choose. So, pirate-controlled sector it is. Here we go. Alrighty then. What do we have here? A few years ago, this region was bustling with trade activity. Now it's overrun with bandits and marauders, so we should tread lightly here. Well, we'll see about that, won't we? Treading lightly is not our forte. 55 scrap in the bank. We have a bunch of beacons over here we can hop over to. I guess we'll hop over to this one and see if we can get out on either of these sides. I'm not sure which way we can actually go here. So let's go check. Let's jump over here and hope it's not an ion storm. It's not an ion storm. That's good. What do we find, however? We find an advanced rebel automated ship stationed near a small rebel space station. However, without functioning sensors, it's impossible to tell what's inside. Well, we can fight it, get the reward for killing it, and possibly get a reward for finding what's in the station, or we can use our stealth to access the space station, which only gives us one reward, but it generally gives you one good reward. I don't know. This is a drone ship, which means you can't use our beam, so I think we will use our cloak here so we don't wind up wasting a billion missiles. Let's use our stealth to access the space station undetected. Oh, that's terrible. The station was apparently designed to outfit rebel ships with drone systems. Inside, we find 18 scrap and a system repair drone. Ugh. Hard to get much worse than that at this point. That's a terribly low-value reward. But yeah, fighting this guy would not have been fun. So I guess that works out. I guess we'll hop over this way and explore this part of space before we work our way over to the nebula. This is kind of a very enclosed, enclosed area. I don't know if we'll be really able to get a whole lot out of it. But we'll try and do our best, and we just jumped into a sun. That's not great. Ugh, it's just boarding party, too. We arrived to find ourselves extremely close to a star. Immediately receiving a message from a pirate ship, we discovered that we've been boarded by enemies who are desperate and hostile. Well, we better take them out then. And they've jumped right into our mantises. That works out well. And I guess we could send our rockmen over there, but that'll take all day. Uh, I'll set the mantises club these guys to an early grave, and as soon as he gets into the Zoltan, I guess I could just send a mantis over here. And I'll send Charlie, my captain, in to help out. I should easily be able to take those guys out, and I can make sure to move Charlie away from the room before any of the kills happen, so he doesn't steal any of the credit. We don't want him having any extra experience now, do we? Alright, there we go. There's a kill, and... That should be another kill. Oh, goodness. You're low on health there, Brian. Thankfully, you killed your target, so that worked out in our favor. Cool boy! All right, I actually have to be very careful here, because if I let this solar flare hit, we might lose our crew. So I'm going to jump before anything bad happens. We'll jump over to this beacon, and hopefully there's nothing terrible there. If that solar flare had hit us in a room where our, our mantis were, that could have been bad. As soon as we arrive, a small ship decloaks behind ours. We immediately power up shields and weapons, but they continue on their trajectory unimpressed. We try to calm our nerves. Whew, well, that could have been bad. Let's hop over here, power up our med bay, and heal up our crew. Mantises, get some life back into you. There we go. Okay. That could have been quite bad, actually. Thankfully, it didn't, but it could have been. Okay. What else can we take advantage of here? Is there anything else we can do? We have 74 scrap, which means we can probably buy some good things, but I think we'll hold on to that for now, because you never know what you'll find. We really need to find a replacement weapon, even if we have to buy it. And it'd be better to buy it than not have one. Let us jump over here, and then we'll check out this part of the center of the area. Is there anything good over here? There's a green toxic planet. We're immediately contacted by a settlement who say, Hello, travelers. Your ship seems to be outfitted for combat. Care to take a bit of mercenary work? Sure, let's listen to their offer. A space dock is under assault from the rebels. Although the dock is technically illegal within their laws, it's very important for our trade. We'll pay you in fuel and scrap if you promise to save them. Uh, let's agree to rescue the store. They transmit the space dock's coordinates and let's go help those black market dudes with their work. It's way over there, which is a bit unfortunate. We weren't planning on going over that side of the map, but we could probably head our way over there without too much difficulty, so let's try it. It's always good to help out those in need, even when they're evil. What do we got over here? The distress beacon here is coming from a civilian ship. It appears to be being chased by a pirate. Well, let's get in there and help those civilians. I didn't even know there was a distress beacon here when I jumped there. At least I wasn't paying attention. We power up our weapons and engage the pirate ship. 
And they've got three layers of shields. That's a pain in the butt. That's going to make it really difficult for us to get in there. Ugh. Okay, I guess we could use the... No, that's, the odds of that actually working are incredibly slim. We could try it. We could try and use the, uh, the Sun Fury to blast down all the layers of shields and then arc beam them at the same time. But the odds of that actually working are pretty darn slim. Our best course of action... No, the thing is, though, they have an NG in there. So if we don't hit them really hard, they're immediately going to repair it, and that's no good for us either. This is just a bad situation all around. Hmm. Thankfully, their weapons have a very low chance of actually hurting us, because they have a Heavy Laser Mark II and a Mini Beam, so they can't really coordinate those well enough to do any real damage. What we could do, though, is we could use the Aurora Mass Cannon and the Sun Fury Rotary Auto Cannon. That would give us the potential of maybe seven total damage to them, and if we fire the Aurora first, it'll take down probably one, maybe even two of the shields, and that might work. Then, we, though, we'd have the problem of having to switch to the Arc Beam before they fix the damage, and that might not work out so well. We really need a non-missile weapon, though, seriously. Let's try it, though, and see how it goes. <sighs> this could be fun for the... Yes, English. So it's going to say, this could be frustrating, but we're going to give it a shot and see how it goes. Blast him the shield with the AMC. Please hit. Yes. Now we need to hit them with the Sun Fury. Actually, you know what we might do? We might wait until they start to fix the... Ooh, that might actually be good. Let's try turning on the Arc Beam. Leave the Aurora on. It might, it'll take them a while to fix that hull breach, and that might give us the actual time. Oh, they missed both shots naturally. That worked out well. I was going to cloak those, but I wasn't paying attention. If we wait until they fix the hull breach to fire this second Aurora Mass Cannon shot, like so, we'll give it one more second, there we go, one more shot, now, yeah, perfect, now we can actually wreak some havoc in here. We can take out their medbay helm and weapons, set them all on fire, and the NG is already injured from being in there, this looks actually like it might work out great. That was th two missiles? Three missiles? Only two. That worked out really well, actually. The, the Aurora Mass Cannon is really powerful. The ability to skip through shields like that is really effective. There we go, no more life signs detected on the pirates. We hasten to contact the civilian ship. Before we do so, we do gather two fuel, a missile, and 42 scrap, replenishing our missile supply slightly. Not quite good enough as we needed, but we might get more from the civilians. Yes, we do. The ship we were... the pirate sit... oh, goodness. The ship the pirate was assaulting was a science vessel. They again thank us for saving them and offer us a small reward. Two fuel, a missile, and 37 scrap. Well, that pays for our missile costs and give a whole pile of scrap as well. I love that scrap recovery arm. We might go ahead and buy level 3 shields, because that would be pretty powerful, but I'd love to see if we can find ourselves a shop first. I'd be surprised if we could, though. How many jumps do we have here until we have to be at this beacon? Because if we can get all the way up here, we should be able to get back to the exit before we get overrun, which would be nice. But it's a nebula beacon anyway, so there's no point being here before the rebels get there anyway. If we have one, two-ish, three... Yeah, we have plenty of time, I think, to get out of here before we need to be on this beacon. So let's jump over here and find out. What do we got around here? Anything good? I hope there's something good. Once we arrive, our screen lights up with warnings. A nearby pirate seems to have advanced hacking tools and have tried to shut down our engines. Our crew keep them barely operational and move in for the attack. Well, that's a pain in the butt. Hopefully we'll be able to do the same thing we did to those guys. To these guys, they've got missiles and two basic lasers. The lasers aren't too dangerous, but they fire really quickly, which could be problematic for us. Let's aurora them in the shields. Please hit. Oh, goodness. I'm so dependent on these weapons actually hitting. Oh, no. We didn't put a breach in this time, and all of their crew is in there trying to fix it. That's going to cause us problems. We need to hit these guys again with a second aurora right now. Go. And good. Awesome. Now, we're going to need to cloak in a second, too, because they've taken out our actual shields. Yes, thank you. No getting hit by missiles today. All right. Arc B. You need to set all those people on fire. Go! Kill as many of them as you can. There's two people dead. That's good. The Rockman's still in there, and the human from the helm has come in to help, so that's better than nothing. We need our next arc beam to take out their weapons, though. Otherwise, we're going to be in serious trouble when they start hitting us with those missiles. Unfortunately for us as well, the arc beam is probably going to take out the two basic lasers first, which is not ideal. Yes, it did. Hopefully the fire damage will prevent them from firing another Artemis, but it will shoot very quickly. No, there it goes. Fantastic. We do still need to stop them from fixing the shields, though. Otherwise, we're going to be hard-pressed to actually kill them. Oh, uh, one more chance here. They're going to be fixing it in a second. We should be able to kill them before they can do it. Yes, good. The Rockman is dead. The human will die soon. He can't fix the shields anymore, so he's sitting duck for our Arc Beam to come in again and murder him. Lovely. Gotta love this ship. This is a powerful weapon, and it's certainly fun to use, too, which definitely helps. Arc Beam those suckers. I could teleport in there, but this is so effective. I really should start doing that, though, because it makes it incredibly powerful. They can't put out the fires while they're fighting our guys. With the pirate ship disabled, our engines come back online again. We salvage what we can from their ship, getting three fuel and 26 scrap. All right, not bad. Not bad. We've seen better recently, but we'll take it. Okay, now what are we going to use? 188 scrap is pretty good. 
If we want to buy our level 3 shields, though, that's 150 scrap, and that's not enough to buy a weapon afterwards if we can. I really should just spend some of this, because it'd be silly to have all of this sitting around and then not be able to use it all at the end, but... Better safe than sorry, I guess. We could run into a jump next... Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. We could also power up our teleporter, get enough to actually use it, and that way we'd be able to teleport in and out a little bit more safely. Let's do that. Let's buy two power bars to stick in the teleporter, level it up to level 2 so it's a bit faster, and we will try and actually make use of that now. Hopefully we'll be able to get some good stuff from it. It'll help us use our arc beam a little bit more effectively. Ooh, that's actually a quite good deal. We don't need any more fuel. We jump into a sector filled with civilian activity. We scan various advertisement channels whilst waiting for our FTL to charge. We're intrigued by a grey market shipwright, offering us seven fuel in exchange for two drone parts. We have no need for drone parts. We don't really have need for fuel either, though, at this point. <clears throat> we'll take the offer anyway, because it's a lot of fuel for very little cost. And it will probably mean we'll never need any again. And that right there is vindication for my decisions. <laughs> we found a store immediately after I would have just decided to spend all of our resources. So I'm glad we found that then and not moments after. I think we still have enough time at that rate. We could go... Yeah, we could go again probably. It'll be just on the edge there, I think, before we need to jump again. Yeah, we should have plenty of time to jump here and then jump there. Looks pretty good to me. Let's go over here and then check out the store. And it's an asteroid belt. Please don't be evil, asteroid belt. We run out of an asteroid belt to discover that a rebel automated scout has been stationed there. We have to get ready to fight. Well, I told them not to be evil, but they wouldn't listen. Unfortunately for us as well, they have a whole bunch of ion weapons, which is not good for us either. Ooh, boy. I could teleport my rockmen in, and they'd probably be able to get out again before they died, but it's a risky endeavor nonetheless. We're going to aurora them in the shields and immediately cloak so those ions miss us thank you we just set the room on fire which is pretty cool it's not something you see all the time in drone ships now the next time they get hit by an asteroid we'll be able to smack them with the arc beam which should prevent them from doing anything to us although it has to actually hit them game hit them please there we go good 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 burn oh the timing was just off there that's unfortunate all right well we'll need to hit them in the shields again to prevent them from actually recovering and we missed game no you're not playing fair Alright, well, we might be able to do this again with just an arc beam. I really want to take that thing out, though, and the longer we sit here, the more trouble we'll be in if they actually hit us. Come on, come on, hit them with an asteroid, otherwise I'm going to have to use another missile on them, and I really don't want to do that at this point. I'm going to cloak. Alright. Alright, Aurora Mass Cannon, please do your... No, the Aurora Mass Cannon, arc beam, that's what I want. That would have been bad. Alright, now I'm going to hit them directly in the shield this time. There we go, and their weapons are now burned out, so they can't do anything to us at this point. Although they might get lucky and hit us with an asteroid timing, we'll have to wait and see about that. The odds of them actually surviving long enough to do that are now fairly slim, because since their shields have been destroyed, ah, they are going to be taking damage from any asteroid that comes their way, especially now that it has burned out the helms, so they can't dodge any of them now. And that is great, in my opinion. Keep smacking them up there, asteroids. I'd rather kill them without wasting any more of my missiles, because I had to spend two on these guys, and I probably shouldn't have spent the second one. Alright, there we go. Ship destroyed. The ship explodes, giving us three fuel, drone part, and 26 scrap, which doesn't pay for our missile cost, which is a bit worrying. Hopefully this store has a non-missile weapon we can buy that'll help us get through those shields. We receive a wideband automated message. Welcome to our humble trade depot and shipyard. All are welcome, but try any funny business, and our 152 automated turret satellites will tear your ship to shreds. Yep, message received there, guys, and you've got beam weapons and healing bombs! You guys don't understand this this concept of not of selling things that are not missile related, jeez. Okay, well, I'll sell them a system repair drone, because I don't need that thing. And I will buy the two missiles they've got, but this is not working out in our favor here, game. Come on, cut me some slack here. I want to I wanna use my money, but I'm afraid to, because if we use it too early, we're not going to be able to get anything out of it. Alright, let's jump over here. Hopefully we'll be able to make it to the exit beacon before we get too badly overrun. What do we have over here? Another AI ship. Our ship is hailed. This is an automated message. Resisting our takeover is pointless. Prepare to die. It appears this rebel ship is run by an AI. Alright, oh my goodness. That's a lot of lasers. Holy cow. Hopefully we can fry these guys before they do too much to us, but that is some seriously heavy firepower. We're going to need to start blasting them with the Sun Fury, I suspect, but I think we might wait a little bit first on that and make sure that we can actually hit them. So I'll fire one arc beam here to try and take out the big laser. Good, that worked. Next one is going to hit them in the helm so they can't dodge us anymore or cloak. If we run it through right through there, that should prevent them from doing anything to us once it eventually happens, and that would be good. We're going to take some hits here from the burst laser, but that's okay by me. I'd much rather focus on taking out their ability to do anything to us first. There we go. Now they can't cloak. How did they hit us with that? I don't know how they got through our defenses. What? Hit? Shoot them anyway. There we go. It's going to take... Really? They've got five health left over? Really? 
That's a pain in the butt. All right, burn out the remaining systems. We can't kill them any other way than you. Oh, that actually work. Please burn, please burn. That would be so cool if that burned up and you didn't have to waste another missile. No, we're gonna have to waste another missile. All right, come on. That's the worst thing though. We have one hole left, so I have to waste a third missile on them. Thanks for nothing there, game. All right, burn them again, see if you can't. Yeah, the fire's already done the damage we needed. All right, wasting a last shot here. Disappointment, no other way to do it though. All right. We probably could have boarded them and tried it that way with our with our rockmen, but that's really tedious. There we go. Ship explodes, giving us a fuel, two missiles, and 34 scrap, as well as the defense drone mark one. So it did kind of pay for itself. Two missiles is pretty good. 34 scrap is not bad, and the defense drone mark one makes it excellent. So I guess I shouldn't be complaining, <laughs> but it's so easy to complain. We really need another weapon, though. Really, really. So let's jump over here. We should be able to get one, two there, and then back to the exit. We'll have to fight our way out from the looks of things, but that should be okay. We'll jump over to this unvisited location and see if there's any goodies over here, and then we can go help out that station. And it's another asteroid belt, what do you know? Thankfully, we have an unshielded ship with no... Really? With no cloak either in an asteroid belt? That thing's just waiting to die. We arrive in the asteroid belt to discover a rebel automated scout has been stationed there and get ready to mash them into a fine paste. <laughs> Seriously. All right, burn them through the weapons and through the helm so they can't dodge. When they should fire their first salvo, we'll cloak so they can't hit us, and we can just watch them die. Sounds like fun to me. They probably have really high engines to compensate for that fact, but they just we just burned out their helm in one go, so that's fine. Not a problem. They can't dodge anymore, meaning the asteroids will eventually destroy them. Might take a little while, but it will eventually happen. And we can arc beam them in the weapons again to make sure they're not going anywhere. There we go. Your weapons are now completely disabled, you son. Nothing you can do to me. Nothing you can do to me. Now, they're going to take more asteroid damage over time here, which is good. We're going to make sure they don't get that helm fixed, although with the moment they repair it, it will fix no matter how much damage we've done previously. There's a hole in the weapon, so they're not fixing that ever. That's good. Enemy ships, uh, rather AI ships, which get breaches in them, they can never fix them. So that's interesting enough. And down goes the auto scout. Bye bye, son. Nice try. Ship explodes, giving us two fuel, a free missile, and 35 scrap. Looking good. Looking good. Looking good. If we head over to the quest beacon, they should actually give us a store option here when we finish the fight because we're rescuing a store. So that should work out for us. We should get another opportunity to buy something here. Once we arrive at the beacon, we detect a rebel scout assaulting a compound on a nearby desolate moon. Let's engage the rebel and rescue the space dock. What do they got? They got a halberd beam and a basic laser. Uh, could be bad, but the odds of them actually hitting them in sync are fairly low. Also, they're all human, so they're not really good at repairing, so we should have a pretty good chance of taking them out here if this, arc, uh, this Aurora miss, uh, Aurora hits. But it missed. Uh, Alright, game. Cut me some slack here, please. Blast them with the Aurora. Oh, they're boarding us, and we missed again. Really? I could just teleport in there at this point, because they do have two humans. I don't really want to get hit by that... Uh, Let's just try it. We're going to teleport our crew in there. They have no med bay. We'll send our rockmen in to punch those dudes. We should be able to easily beat them at this point. They're only going to be fighting us one-on-one. -on -one. And that way our mantis over here can beat the invaders off. And our... Beat the invaders off. Yeah, there's something taken into context. And the rockmen on board can kill the human crew. Now, we are going to have to watch out, though, because... They could be hitting us with the halberd beam before unlucky, so we're going to cloak out there just to make sure nothing bad happens. And we should really put some power into the med bay. So that will do that as well. And as these guys eventually club Shirai to death, we will have claimed their ship. In perfect condition this time, too. I guess that's true, though, eh? The outpost hails us, thanking us, saying that they don't know what we did to anger the rebels, but they were ready to kill us. Of course you know what they did. You're an illegal station. They offer to show us, our, show us their goods and patch up our hull. Back up to full health, which is nice. 35 scrap as well. And... Come on, game! Don't recover your arm and not a minute reloader. Good augments, but we already have good augments. No need to get anything else at this point. A drone control, which we don't really need, but we could use now that we have a defense drone. So we may as well buy it. We have a ton of scrap to spend anyway. There's a defense drone and a defense drone, so we can sell this one. <laughs> okay, that worked out. We don't need two of those. We can buy their missiles, because they have some. We I dislike constantly buying missiles. It's really expensive, and it's a huge waste. But we don't have any weapons that we can use instead, so I guess we need them now. But we have these rockmen. I should start using them more. If we can teleport them into the enemy ship, or the mantis as well, send them both in in two waves, then they'd be able to take out the, uh, the shields from the inside, perhaps. It might be a little bit less uh, fast than doing it the other way, but it might work. It's better than nothing. We should really start using them more often, because we do have an incredible crew here. Let's send Charlie back over to get healed up, too, because he's been injured almost all this episode. Ever since he fought at the beginning, I haven't actually gone and healed him. You should get some health back there, Charlie, shouldn't you? Yes, I'm sure you feel much better. I might kill you, but not yet. 
All right, 173 scrap. We should really spend some of it at this point. We're not going to find anything for a little while. We'll have plenty of time to get money between then and now. So we're going to upgrade our shields again, like I said we should earlier. It costs basically all of our money, but it is worth it in the long run because it makes us much more survivable. So let's hop back over to this beacon. We might even check out this far end because we have a ton of fuel. And then we'll head back to the exit since we have to fight the rebels there anyway. A heavily damaged Federation ship is hiding in the nebula at this beacon. Before we have time to contact them, they fade away into the nebula. Well, we could lock onto their life sense or their teleporter, because that's a nice blue option. We could try and follow them, but there's no guarantee we'll actually get anything to happen here. And the problem is, if we lock onto their life signs, we'll probably just get a crew out of it. But we'll find out what happens. We've eaten the Federation crew aboard. One gladly joins our crew, and the rest wait to be dropped off at the next station, getting 36 scrap. Alright. And Vincent. I'm sorry, Vincent. We don't have any more room in here, so I'm just going to dump you out of the airlock into the nebula. <laughs> I guess I could just drop you off with your crewmates, but that's not quite as evil. What do we got going on over here? We can jump over here and then back to the exit. That's probably the best course of action. Get as much as we can out of this area. Even if there's nothing there, it's not like we have any fuel to lose. And what do we find? Oh, good. Our ship emerges quite far away from the beacon. We see a rebel ship waiting nearby, undoubtedly stationed to look for us. Well, that's perfect. We're going to go in there and kill them. Alright, they're going to try and board us eventually. they got Hermes missiles, which is quite nasty. But we do have a defense drone if we need it. We don't quite have enough power to run it, though. I didn't just notice that. We started with one power in our drone bay. That's kind of weird. All right. Aurora mass cannon these suckers in the shields. bam -o! And we missed again. You can't be missing that much, game. Especially now we have so few missiles. All right. I'm going to cloak out here just to make sure that Hermes doesn't hit us, because that would be nasty if it did. And we're going to Aurora mass cannon these guys in the shields again. Please hit. There we go. And it didn't actually take them out. Ooh, boy. I'm starting to be a bit frustrated with these missile weapons. A little bit frustrated with these missile weapons. Okay, roar mass cannon, please hit. There we go. I think their shields just burned themselves out before I fired the missile, which makes me feel really stupid. But there's nothing I can do about it now. We're going to make sure that their weapons and whatnot are burning, because that will make it a lot harder for them to do anything to us. Of course the Hermes missiles stay a lot armed. That's okay, though. We have a bit of a result and overshield ready, so we can take this hit, even if it does hit us. Yes, it did, which is a good thing we had the shield on then, I guess. And they've decided to board us now with their heavily damaged crew. That's fine, though. We're going to set them on fire again. And let's set our mantises in there to help Charlie. Get out of there, Charlie. We'll let the mantises get in. Oh, you didn't go there, Raffin. Get in there and kill, Raffin. Kill. 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 All right, they've taken over the helm. No, thank you. Charlie, back in the helm. We could arc beam them some more. I have no idea where they actually are because we can't see into the ship. Although we could send our rock men in there to get some experience, too, which might not be a bad, bad decision. They could always use some extra fighting skill, especially if we plan on using them more later. So let's teleport them into the helm and see if they can't punch someone to death. This might be the last guy. Down he goes. It was the last guy. With the crew dead, we take their three fuel out of storage, and we also take 42 scrap. All right. That's good. More money is always good. Get out of there, rock men, before you get absolutely destroyed. All right. Looking good here. Has he taken any damage? Four health and damage. You know what? I'll send you into the med bay briefly, because it's on already, but then you're getting back out of there. That's all you get. That's all you get. Okay. 98 scrap. Now it's time to fight for our lives. Let's fight this exit beacon and see if we can take out those rebels without getting beaten too hard. Oh, I should have upgraded my defense drone here. That was silly of me. We found the exit beacon, but the rebels got here first. We'll have to survive long enough to jump to the next sector. We might just be running away here. Three shield bubbles, breach missiles, lots of lasers. Eh, not my favorite thing to see. We're probably going to take some hits here, too. Probably. Um, you know what we'll do, though? Now they've fired all those lasers, we'll cloak. They're guaranteed to miss us. That'll give us a bit of spare time. Plus, the cloak time slows down how fast they can shoot the breach missiles again, which should mean we have a pretty easy time getting out of here. I could board them and try and do damage that way, but I think I just want to run, because I don't want to get blasted too much with this thing, or all of those lasers. So we're going to jump to safety here. Sector 4, I'm out of here. Two options, Rock Homeworlds, NG Homeworlds. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting dichotomy here. Or rather, interesting dilemma is the word I meant to choose. Where do we go? The NG Homeworlds are home to a fairly difficult to complete mission because it has two different quest beacons you have to choose between. It's fairly easy to pick the wrong one and I'll have time to go to the other one. The Rock Homeworlds has the uh, fighting off in a sun place, which should be fairly doable. Plus, we do have a bunch of Rock crew. We might as well go there. Let's go check out the Rock Homeworlds because we haven't been there in quite some time, I don't think. Well, at least not since the, uh, the time we went to the Crystal Sector, which is not going to happen this time, but let's go there anyway. Rock Homeworlds, here we come. Always more appealing to go to the more red areas because we have more people to fight. Although, on the other hand, we don't have anything to really help us fight them, so hopefully this works out for us. The rock people have a particularly aggressive stance towards alien races trespassing in their space, so we should tread carefully here. However, you may notice this is also Sector 5, which means we're going to have to leave this. 
for next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hopefully you've enjoyed the episode. This has been Vanguard of Valor playing some FTL here on board the VSS Archon, part of Keeve's Incursor Cruiser mod. If you liked the episode, don't forget to like the episode, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.